Now that's a big dog. You muted, you muted, you muted, you muted. Thank you. And I want to thank you for the volume and, and uh, of uh, material you've been putting out lately. It's been just great intellectual ammunition at an important time. And I'm looking forward to the New Year's show as well. And thank you to all the donors who are matching and, you know, upping your, uh, you know, they're raising the bar for all of us uh, who are donors of yours, but uh, we're happy yeah, to, 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 to have that raise. So um, I wanted to ask you about something out of the Middle East in the last couple of days uh, that I read about. Um, you and I are both fans of Fauda, and it was almost like something out of Fauda happened, as I understand it, in Iran, one of Iran's top nuclear scientists was assassinated in this very coordinated, amazing hit job that involved a number of people and that supposedly is, was carried out by Israel. I don't think it's been confirmed. I think John uh, Brennan, some Americans condemn this as an act of political violence. So I wanted to know what your take is on that, you know, in, and, uh, you know, is that, is that the type of thing that America, for example, should be involved in is, you know, efficient assassinations of, you know, people high level in Iran, Saudi Arabia, North Korea. Um, what's your take? Yeah, I mean, this is the second assassination in Tehran, in the Tehran area, in uh, that we that we found out about. I think the first assassination happened in the summer. Uh, the first assassination was actually assassinating the num uh, Al Qaeda's number two, who's been living in Iran for a long time, and uh, was assassinated there. And uh, the assumption is, and I think I think this is this credible evidence of this that the Israelis did it at the request of the U.S. Uh, we don't know exactly, but clearly the Israelis did it. So they assassinated also in a very coordinated at attack in a suburb of, uh, of Tehran, the number two Al-Qaeda guy in the world. And then now they've assassinated the number one nuclear scientist in Iran. But not just any nuclear scientist, the guy who... Uh, worked on converting, you know, in building nuclear weapons. So he was the guy who who was responsible for the entire nuclear program in uh, Iran. I think I think this has been going on for a long time. Uh, you know, Israel. Every few years, you hear about scientists or uh, assassinated in in Iran. It's not always as big headlines as this one was, but the, I think the Israelis have a program to take out anybody involved in this program, take out the brains of the operations. So they can't build, so they can't build the, nuclear, the nuclear bomb. They did this, some of you might remember, uh, most of you are probably too young to, but you know, Israel took out the Iraqi nuclear power plant in 1980 80 or 81, maybe 81. Uh, and before they took out the actual nuclear power plant, they for years had been killing Iraqi uh, Iraqi scientists who were working on the plan. So they basically, you know, will not tolerate uh, the, the, the building of nuclear weapons by a, uh, an enemy nation, and they're taking them out. Now, look, I, I, I believe all this is weak and not enough and, and, and uh, only delays. It doesn't change the, the, the projection. Uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the scientists that work in places like Iran and others on nuclear power pro program might be they might be from North Korea, they might be from Pakistan who has nuclear weapons, uh, they might be Russians who, uh, who who used to be under the Soviet Union. It's hard to assassinate every nuclear scientist out there and identify them and do it. The the the, the proper thing Israel and the United States should do is bomb any facility that is suspected of nuclear activity into oblivion. That is, make sure that, that not only is it bombed and destroyed and cannot ever be used, but send a clear message. Every time you build something, we will knock it out. We, we will destroy it. Um, so I, I still think it's weak to, to, to go out there and assassinate. To say, you know, North Korea, you assassinate this general, another general comes about. Uh, Israel's been assassinating leaders, uh, military leaders of the Hamas for decades. All right. Every time a military leader is kicked out, a new military leader comes in. Uh, Trump assassinated Soleimani, the, 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 the head of the National Guard in Iran, was it about a year ago? Uh, they've replaced him. Somebody else is there. 
to do the work. You either take them out. I mean, what you need to do is take them out. These little pinpricks, uh, and, and I don't think in the long run are effective, even though they buy you time. Well, quick, quick, quick follow up. Is America's policy against political assassination uh, altruistic? Is that self sacrifice? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Now, it came out of a period where the CIA was probably assassinating people without, I'd say, without strategy, without a real clear view of why they were doing it and what, what was going to replace these people. Um, so, so I'm not saying that the prohibition at the time. Uh, but yes, I mean, every tool should be available to uh, the military and to the, the president and to those in foreign policy to deal with enemies. I mean, if you could assassinate Stalin, wouldn't you? If you could assassinate Hitler, wouldn't you? Um, so absolutely, uh, the United States should permit assassinations. I, well, we do it with the drones, right? We're, we're taking out Al-Qaeda people all the time and ISIS people all the time with drones. Uh, it should be broader. Israel, unfortunately, suffers from the same problem. They assassinate Hamas military leaders, but they won't assassinate Hamas political leaders. But it's the political leaders that probably do more damage. So um, if somebody's dedicated to your destruction, you should, you should, you know, destroy them first. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourrunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>